So now the question we have is a string to integer. Let's read the question. The question says, given a string s, the objective is to convert it into an integer format. We will be given a string s and what do we have to do? We have to simply convert it to an integer. And it is specifically mention, uh, mentioning that without utilizing any inbuilt function. Refer these steps to know the at OA function here. What are the steps? First of all, it actually gives the whole process that you have to perform. First thing, if your input or the string that you have has any leading white spaces, then you have to get rid of it. After that, you need to check whether the integer that you have has a sign. That means whether it is a positive one or the negative one. All right. And by default, if there is uh, no like no sign mentioned, then it is going to be considered positive. Fine. Third one says read the integer by ignoring leading zeros until a non-digit zero, until a non-digit character is encountered or end of the string is reached. If no digits are present, then you can return zero. The last thing is that if the integer is greater than 2 to the power 31 uh, minus 1, then return this value. And if the integer is a smaller than negative side of it, then you return that value. Okay. So it is just a like corner case that is given to us. These could be very big and large values. And if we encounter so, we just need to return the same value. That's all. Let's read the sample test cases. The first case very simply just says, okay, the string that you have is negative 1, 2, 3. What you have to give is the number negative 123. Talking about this condition, in this you have empty vacant, like empty space and then you have a negative symbol. But that is not, uh, you know, with any number or any numeric character. Thus, in that case, we have to return 0. The conversion is not possible here. Then if we have very big numbers, then we have to give the upper limit. What is the upper limit? 2 to the power 31 minus 1. We have, to return, uh, we have to return this number. Again, a similar case, if the value exceeds the limit, we have to return this. In this scenario, it was actually negative. So for the negative one, we know that it is going to be uh, negative 2 to the power 31. Okay. Then we have some of the like alphabets or different characters included, which cannot be converted to an integer. In that scenario, we simply have to return the value till that point that we can read the integer. So in this scenario, you can see you have negative 0, 0, 1, 2. Then you have G, F, G, 4. So if you start reading the integer from here and if you try to convert, then the negative symbol is going to be, you know, like under the consideration, then the number you will make is going to be 0, 0, 1, 2, which you can read as 12 uh, as well, right? Thus the answer is negative 12. Now I hope that you have uh, got all the conditions right. You know how and what to do in the question. Okay, let's try to see the approach now. So for the approach, let's try considering negative one, two, three, and I would also include a few spaces here. Let's suppose we have two vacant spaces, then, then I have a negative symbol, and then I have one, two, and three. So in the very first step that we have to do, as it was mentioned already in the question, we have to get rid of these. Okay, so you can start your travel from here, and you can keep on ignoring until you get a value other than a space. Suppose you get here. At this point, you have a symbol. It could be either positive or negative, or it could be like just the number starting already. So if it is a negative, uh, a negative symbol mentioned, then you need to keep a like simple a track of it. You can uh, use a variable sign and you can store negative one there. Or initially you can have a boolean value. It depends upon you. You have to mark a flag so that the eventual value you return should be a negative value. That's all. Now once you start reading from this point, you need to start to check whether it can be converted to an integer or not. What is the simplest way? Simplest way is to use the ASCII, the ASCII corresponding values. Okay, what we simply have to do, we, ha uh, we have this string s, we will say s with this particular index at this particular index, call, let's call it idx, if this value when converted to its ASCII value form and we subtract the ASCII value of the character 0, okay, Let's say the, uh, this is giving our ASCII value, the ASCII value of a character 0. So this actually would be giving you a number within the range of 0 to 9. If the number goes beyond it, then you know that simply this number cannot be converted into a numeric character because it is something other than this, other than these ones. So now that you have performed the check that this is a valid character that can be converted to a numeric character. Simply, you would read that the value that you have is going to be the character itself. 
it's going to be the number itself. Now, once you have it, let's suppose you have one. The next time you read, the next index you read, you will have two. You are getting digits out here, but how will you make a number in the decimal format? That means uh, in the base 10. But for base 10, simply, uh, you might already know it, just you have to remember that when we are making up a number, when we are making up a decimal number particularly, we have 10 as the base. So simply any number that, any digit that we get, we need to first multiply that with 10 and then we need to start adding the next digit. So first of all, when I got one, it was one with me. But the next time a new digit is being encountered and I am making a number, let's call it num for the time being, and I'm making a number, what do I have to do? I have to first multiply 10 to the previous number that I have. Let's do it like this. Num equals num multiplied with 10, then plus the ith value that we are having, the ith character that we are having. Let's suppose I've got a temporary value from here. Okay. So I will add this 10. Fine. And till which point this is going to go on until the string is either done, that means you are done traversing your string, or the other case could be. Let's say some characters other than these one, two, three, four starts appearing there. Both of the cases, you will have your number made up. Okay. Once you're out of the loop, then you can simply return this number. And you need to perform a check. First of all, if you had a negative symbol before, then make sure you do not return 123, 123. But what do you return is negative 123. Let's try to see the code for the same. So we have the code here. First of all, what are we doing? We are just making one variable sign so that once we check our first letter, that okay, I have my sign negative, I can store in that. Then I have two more variables. One is a result in which I'd be making my number. And then I have an index, which would be used to iterate through my string. Okay. Now, first of all, what are we doing? We are getting rid of any white spaces that we have. Okay. So whensoever I encounter these ones, I simply move the index. Okay. Zero at, I have an a space. My index would be now one. If I have a space on index one as well, I would move to two till the point I encounter any other value. If I do so, first I need to check whether I have encountered any of these symbols or it is something else. So if it is any of these symbols, then what are we doing? I'm saying that if it is negative, I'd mark my sign as negative this time because now I, I will deal the number as positive. But before, just before sending the number, I would mark this or, or you can say I would just multiply my value with negative one. So all the time, just make sure of it. We are doing a boundary check that my index is not reaching to the end. Okay, because if it does, then we would encounter an error. So once these two checks are done, our third or the next step is converting it to the digits. Okay, so now I'm checking that if my index is still in the range of my or of my string, uh, I check that every number that I have, whether it is in the range of zero to nine or not. So if it is, then I'm going to start, uh, like I, I will start making my number up in the decimal format. I would uh, say whatever result I have, I have to multiply that with 10 plus the digit that has occurred here in the form of like a decimal number. Once that is done, like after this, uh, this keeps on running, we have to check that my result is not going beyond this limit. Because if it goes beyond this limit, then what will happen? We simply have to, the question mentions, we simply have to return this. Okay. So if it is 2 to the power 31, 2 to the power 31 minus 1, if my result is bigger than this value, then I have to give this value. Otherwise, uh, like if, uh, if that value is on negative side, or you can say the symbol I had a mark before was negative, then I have to return minus 2 to the power 31. Okay. So this is boundary check. And uh, every time, like my ind index is in getting increased by 1. So once this while loop is completely executed, my result would be found and eventually what do I have to do? I simply have to return result multiplied with my sign. Okay. If it was plus, then it would not affect. If it was negative, the uh, result would be marked as negative. So one thing that we are doing here, this boundary condition checking. Well, in Python, we would not encounter any overflow. But in some other languages such as Java or C++, they have a certain range for integers. Okay. So the range for integers is this one. It is going to be from... Uh, minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1. Okay. If any value goes beyond this limit, then it would not be stored in an integer and you would encounter an integer overflow, which will make all of the values, the all of the values that gets changed could be meaningless to you. So for that, we perform another check here. We have to play a little smart. So at every time I would check that the, uh, the result that I formed, I would 
see that whether it is smaller than this value or not. I'm doing int max divided by 10. This is my int max value. Once I divide it by 10, I get this much value. So if my result is getting bigger than this value, that means if it goes, let's say, 3, 6, 5 in the end, I would know that the next number I would add from my string would be somewhere 0 to 9, which would go after 5, and this would go out of the range. So what I'm doing here is when I'm making up an integer, continuously I'm checking that it is not uh, like it won't cross the boundary condition just by including one more digit. That is what I'm doing here. So here, if that is so, then I would simply perform this. Like if my sign is plus, my int max would be returned. If my sign is negative one, my int min would be returned. But there is one more case. I've checked, like I've divided it by 10. I checked all of these values. If it goes bigger than 6, 4, it goes 6, 5, 6, 6. I know the next digit would make, uh, like which, uh, would just do the overflow, correct? But what if it is 6, 4? Okay. If it is 6, 4, that means my result is equals to equals to int max divided by 10. If it is equal to 6, 4, then what about the last digit? Well, it must be within the range of 7. Okay. It could be 0, uh, like from 0 till 7. If it goes 8, then that is also a case that, okay, that cannot be stored here. This is the limit, maximum limit. So for this special case, we need to write this condition. Okay. And then, you know, we are simply returning this. So now that we have seen the code and we have discussed the boundary condition as well, what will be the resulting complexity of this code? So this, what, what are we doing? We are having a string and we are simply traversing through the string and we are doing nothing extra, correct? So it is going to be order of n. n means the length of my string. Well, the question mentions that the string's length is not going to go beyond 5, so you can say it's 0, 015 as well, okay? And are we taking any extra space to store our answer? We are just taking an integer, that means a single variable, that is not going to change any time, like a space complexity of mine, the space complexity would still be order of one. Now let's go ahead and try to run this code. So here's the same code. Let's try to compile and run it. Okay, so upon compilation, we have the expected output. Let's try to submit that, test it with all of the test cases. All right, it is passing all the test cases. So I hope you have found this video helpful. And uh, if you like the approach, if you like uh, the content of this video, then do drop it in the comments and like it.